Today on this episode of The Crossover, we will be discussing entrepreneurship in medicine with Forbes recognized entrepreneur and founder of legendary skincare companies, Dr. Kathy Fields. Learn how to form a promising idea, develop the concept, and ultimately change the world of healthcare. Much more on this episode of The Crossover. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to be speaking with Kathy Fields today, one of the leading medical entrepreneurs in the world, talking about how she built a multi-billion dollar company. Hey, Kathy, how are you? Great. I love technology. Well, that was very easy. It was. It was. Well, listen, it's, um, it, it's a pleasure having you on. I'm just going to do a brief introduction just while everyone's logging on. We have the absolute pleasure of speaking with my friend and colleague here, Kathy Fields. Uh, She is a world-recognized entrepreneur in medicine. Uh, She is the founder, co-founder of Proactive, as well as Rodan and Fields, both wildly successful companies that have helped her amass a net worth of over 1.5 billion. Truly amazing. Uh, You research my numbers? Oh, absolutely. You have to. You got to do the research. Uh, in fact, Forbes listed her as the number 18 on its list of America's self-made women. As background, Dr. Fields received her undergraduate degree from Northwestern and the University of Florida. She received her MD from the University of Miami. Go Canes. Got it. Um, and then she completed her dermatology residency at Stanford. And she's currently uh, in California. She's faculty at both UCSF and Stanford and has published several best-selling books. And we're here to talk about her, her really incredible journey and talk about entrepreneurship and medicine. What can young physicians that want to follow in her footsteps, uh, how can they emulate that? So again, Kathy, so much, so happy to have you on here. Thank you for joining us. Oh, pleasure. It's like coming home. In fact, I wish I was there. I'm in San Francisco and we're having Armageddon, rain, hail, power outages, mudslides, trees falling. It's crazy here in the Bay Area. Yeah, no, it sounds like it's it's really been been a rough week or two over there. Um, so let's just, you know, get into it. When did you first get involved in entrepreneurship? Is this something that you've always wanted to do? You were a medical student, resident? How far back? All right. First of all, why am I in San Francisco and not Miami? So it's a good story. Um, years, years ago, 1983, go that far back. I applied for dermatology in my own program, University of Miami. I was already on track for OBGYN. That was an OBGYN intern at the Jack. And I applied all over the country, but I was not allowed into the University of Miami. It's a different era. Wow. In that era, um, the, they had five women uh, dermatology residents. And in fact, I delivered one of the residents' babies. I was on hand for hers, but all five were pregnant. And so the question I was asked in the interview is, so Dr. Fields, are you going to have a baby in your residency? <laughs> and I said, you know, that would be wonderful, but I'd love to be married first. So if you got some great guys. <laughs> so unfortunately I did not get into that program. I got into Stanford, which is why I'm out here on the other side of the planet. Um, so, but the good fortune was I met Katie Rodan at Stanford and what we were told way back then by our chairman, who was outgoing, he had been like the same, the same, uh, decade as the Miami chairman. Uh, he said, get a hobby, be the expert, be the best at something, or you'll be doomed to treating acne and warts prophecy, right? So it was Katie who was the entrepreneur. She said, you know, I see a huge problem with acne. Now, if you go back to my era, there used to go to any doctor you want and your insurance would cover it. But suddenly things had changed to HMO and, you know, brain surgery is far more important than pimples. But we knew that the scars you get are forever. And what it does to your self-esteem is devastating for a lifetime. And suddenly acne didn't matter. It didn't count. Insurance wouldn't pay for it. People couldn't come unless they required Accutane and even that was a problem. I just finished my morning clinic. I have a laser clinic with the new AviClear. And as I hold my patient's head in my hands, they tell me you've changed my life because now I have the confidence to go on 
and be all I can be. Look, I'm not wearing makeup. The scars are fading. There's no more new pimples. So for the doctors and entrepreneurs out there, it isn't about the money. It's never about the money. If it's going to be about the money, you're going to fail because that's not going to carry you through the ups and downs of business. Business is difficult, extremely difficult, and you need profound motivation. You need to be compelled to fix a problem to be an entrepreneur. If you're not compelled, tortured, where you're up all night dreaming of your solutions, you're not going to make it. But I had a partner. Katie is fantastic. So we were two like-minded women. And it's a cute story because when I came from Miami, I was Miami. I was in hot pink and white pumps and big hair because, you know, I have put on the humidity and it grows probably on this uh, shoot right now. But Katie came in from the South California in rhinestones. Everybody else at Stanford was wearing beige, Peter Pan collars. It was dull. <laughs> it was dull. So we were two like-minded women in a, a different world who really bonded and with the same vision. So it's about a vision and without a shared partner, the journey is difficult. But it was Katie who identified acne and the journey began. So, you know, on that, I just wanna focus because what you said is I think so important for anyone listening. It's not about the money. It may eventually bring you a lot of money, but the journey and the effort has to be about your passion and your vision. So I can't really emphasize that enough. And then explain how picking the right partner can make or break you. It's the end of everything. It's really a marriage. And it is exactly a marriage because you have to be aligned and you have to be willing to work. You have to be willing to share and you can't keep count. There was a point where I had complications from a pregnancy and I was bed rested, in fact, for both my pregnancies. So Katie picked up the ball and kept going. And she didn't keep points. You know, Kathy's been, uh, you know, stuck in the house. She can't do the work. Nothing like that. You, you have to be able to share the big load, talk through the night. And when there are bumps, because it's never easy and there's always problems, there's always problems. Even at the top of our game, there's problems. But don't let people divide you. You know, in this case, we were two women. Katie's gorgeous. People are trying to lure her off other companies. And she realized, and I realized early on, together we will make it. But if our ego, vanity, um, you know, a shiny object over there gets in the way, then our partnership is over and our dream goes with it. So you must agree to work out your issues, whatever the problems and frictions are, because there will be, it's a marriage. You can do it and you can prevail. And over our 40 year relationship, it's exactly what we've been doing. That's such a great, great message. Tell us the, the biggest challenge that you and Katie faced as you were building up your company. Oh, there's so many, which, which one? Just um, the biggest, okay. just the, the biggest challenge you guys had. It, there's big ones every step of the way. We could have stopped and, and you know, called it quits and just gone back to our practices every hour of the moment. So number one, we're both adjunct professors at Stanford and I'm also at UCSF. We have families and we're wives and my parents just passed from Miami, but we're, we're all together. Um, number two, besides the home responsibilities in my medical practice, we both practiced all along this journey um, the business world is not medicine. People in business think differently. We were with, we had created our formulas for a proactive solution over five years. That's a long time. Again, most people give up, but we were compelled to continue. And I can tell you about the lousy chemists and learning curve and how we got to go. Except this big story is we were held up by Neutrogena. We thought, oh, we made the formulas. We've done a clinical. We've proven this works well. We can really stop acne by prevention. Proactive means take control. Stop the process. We don't cure it, but if you use low-strength medicines, three medicines in a cleanser, toner, lotion every day, we stop the process. It worked better than we thought. It worked as well as an, an Accutane study, which was shocking. We didn't publish that, but the point being, we had results even on difficult acne. 
And of course now really tens of millions of people later, proactive now over 25 years old. So that was 1995 to 216 is when we exited. Um, it changed the lives of millions of people in the most beautiful way. But was it hard? Yes, Neutrogena had us tied up for a year and then turned us down. Can you imagine? It was full stop done. Now what? Then it, we were prepared. Neutrogena told us about infomercial. What is that? It's a 30 minute opportunity in the old days, last century, to describe a very difficult, complicated condition, acne. To show how when you use medicines and with diagrams, how it works. To show real testimonials before and afters. They brought in celebrities, every one of them, from P. Diddy and and I can't think of anybody, Vanessa Williams, Judith Light, um, Katy Perry, Alicia Keys, Justin Bieber, all of those were proactive sub celebrities. We became the golden card. Anybody who was a supporter of proactive became superstars. It was just this interesting legend that occurred. But it wasn't them that, that drew the attention. By being on television, you, you would buy it and your skin would get better because we had a 60 day guarantee. And if you got better, your girlfriend said, gee, what are you using? Or the soccer team said, wow, you look great. What are you using? So it was word of mouth. But it wasn't easy to get to infomercial. It took courage in the year 95 for dermatologists, and certainly Stanford dermatologists, they did not approve, for Katie and I to be on television. Good girls didn't go on TV in that day and age. That was very bold. So you require courage. You need to be a disruptor. A lot of people approach me and want to go, me too. I want to be next Dr. Pimple Popper. Guys, that's old news. It's been done. Think bigger. Think smarter. Think how you can help more people. Don't repeat yesterday. This Instagram toy, that's last year. What's next? Be the next one. So when Katie and I did infomercial, we were first. When Katie and I did a direct selling company, Rodan and Fields, which is current, we're, we're the first two doctors to ever do that. So in, in skincare arena. So it's be the first and be great at it and give it as much effort as you do to your medical profession and you can be successful. What would you say along those lines is the number one pitfall that you see young entrepreneurs fall into? There's a, a line that says, how does it go? Um, success without effort is called entitlement. You know, it, we think we're smarter because, you know, we're doctors and got straight A's and, you know, clinically, technically we check, check boxes, but it's, it's not about that. And you're not entitled just because you have an MD to be successful. And I know lots of people who, who fail. Startups are incredibly complicated. You have to have your problem and your solution. You have to know the value of it. What is the size of the market that you want to treat? Example, if you're treating nodularis, that's very nice. Patients know, don't have a clue what nodularis is. Do you, if you're not a dermatologist? So there's a breakthrough medical drug for that. But let's be honest, the size of the market is, yeah. So as a result, you need to do your homework. You need to study. Your hubris that because you're a doctor gives you a right at the table is where we go wrong. You're not respected. They think of us physicians as talent, believe it or not. You know, you're a spokesperson for someone else's brand versus really leveraging your brilliant expertise in a breakthrough drug or device or approach. And so be aware of that. You're not entitled. Uh, to something special because of your MD. So you must do your homework. You must study. Business classes are online everywhere today. Uh, so books uh, right now, I gotta think of some names, but they're basically um, about funding and capital and startups. They're about blue oceans. You know, if you're just another acne product trying to chase proactive, that's a red ocean now. There's too much competition. Don't even start. But Simon Sinek wrote the book uh, about why. What is your why? And if you don't know it, if you're not really sure why you're going to do this, you can't start. And so for doctors, you can define your problem, define your solution, be ready to be limber, 
you may think it's from here to there, but Katie and I went from here to here because it is no straight line at all. And be ready to be nimble and change your approach as needed. And last point is build a team. This is where we really get caught up. You need to trust people, but sometimes people let you down. And before you give away your idea, really make sure that the team you're building is with you. You have to be a great leader. So you have to have your vision with great leadership skills, trustworthy, and willing to excite your team. That energy will keep the team rolling because one person alone cannot create a company. You need lawyers and financial guys and marketing and it depends if you need FDA and regulatory. It's a big lift, but it is worth it. I mean, I love how you talked about the work ethic because at the end of the day, work ethic trumps talent, you know, 10 times out of 10. So I think people who go into it with the notion that they're talented and, you know, they very well may be, but they don't have to put the effort in, that's going to fail 10 out of 10 times. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, the other thing that's so critical is the financial support for these entrepreneurs. Yeah. Seed money, startup money, all of that is critical. When should people be looking for that financial assistance? All right, great question, because I always say go as far as you can by yourself. Uh, it depends on what the lift is. Now, if you're in the bench lab and you've got a molecule and it's going to cure cancer, you're going to need a lot of funding by big guns early. And you're probably involved at your university and the university already gets a piece of any of your intellectual property. So you're already diluted before you've begun. So that's, so again, there's many paths to take, but go as far as you can. Katie and I self-funded completely proactive and we self-funded completely Rodan and Fields, which wow. means we have 100% ownership. That is most unusual. But through, you know, <laughs> scraping things together, we did it and it was the correct path. Now, again, you know, to broad sweeps, depending on where you are, if you can get your, your intellectual property, your IP handled by yourself, you can pay your attorneys to protect you so that you can go forward um, before you get seed investors, before you, you, know, you really start giving things away, you'll have more at the other side when you sell one day to a strategic. And I recommend that. Katie and I went all the way and built uh, Rodan and Fields, our company, and that was massively risky. In today's world, which is changing so fast, the competition is there so quickly. My current recommendation as I speak to different groups is get it as far as you can, professionalize it, and have a strategic buy it. And you're going to say, but I want to take it all the way. And I'm going to say, you're really not qualified. We don't have the skills to build a huge, you know, I have 600 people working at Rodana Fields. That's not what we do. You know, you don't want to worry about HR and politics and social media crashing your website. It's not what we do. Um, but you can, uh, you know, still retain a royalty, a licensing agreement, and still make money on your inventions, but without having to do something completely out of what we normally do, which is medicine. So that's just a point. Unless you want to drop everything and go to business school, not a, not a safe way to proceed. Yeah, I think it's kind of stay in your lane mentality and know what your limits are uh, and let the experts handle whatever the experts handle. I think that's, that's, a, that's a great piece of advice. For the young entrepreneurs that are going to be listening, what would you say is the roadmap from initial idea to final success? Just like the major three or four road marks that you have from that, from that first idea until it's finalized. Okay, from the first idea takes research. So you've got to go into what is the size of the problem? What is the value of the problem? Is it a $10 million, billion dollar, hundreds of billion dollar problem that, need, that needs fixing? So you can know these things. This is basic business. Then you've got to go through your list of, uh, you know, how you're going to create that answer to the problem. And I would always recommend mentors. So after you've developed your concept and you've got a pitch deck 
and you think you have a game plan and you put enough money to even make a prototype, if that's possible. Again, I, these are broad strokes because it varies depending on what it is we're talking about. But once you've gotten as far to, as you can, find mentors in the path, the lane you're in. So I'm in skincare. And I get approached, you know, all the time by companies out of skincare. And sometimes I'm very valuable because of my vast experience on the business side. And other times I'm not. So you need to have somebody who really has done it in the category. So if you've got a drug, and you got to get it through the FDA regulation. You need someone who's done that path to point you in the quickest way there with the right people and contacts to make it through. If you're shooting from zero, you can't climb that wall. So mentoring, define what you're doing, get mentors along your way, then if needed, look for funding while you're building your team. And then to market is a whole huge opportunity because market today can mean many things. You can sell something online, you know, all by yourself right here with some nifty marketing, which is available to anyone. Um, you might get great traction. And when you do demonstrate sales of an idea, uh, I mean, of a device or a, a skincare or whatever it is you're doing, um, that makes you very desirable to what's called a strategic. A strategic is calling. So if you have a strategic by you, that's usually the golden ring. That's usually for our world what you want. In other words, Katie and I went to Neutrogena, but they weren't ready for us. So you need to go to a strategic when you, they won't come unless you've demonstrated sales and the size of the market. But they're equipped to roll out whatever it is you're doing in a very big way. They have a machine in place to professionalize it. And again, depending on what it is, maybe it's Merck, maybe something else you're gonna need that. So if you're, if you're really thinking huge billion dollar companies, um, you need a partnership in one of the, with one of these big players. Now, what, you, know, you mentioned a couple times an MBA. How important is a business background if you wanna be an entrepreneur? The answer is not at all, because you can get it online. It's an amazing world. You know, Katie and I went to something called a library. Hmm seen one of those <laughs> so, in a library we had actual books but now you can get podcasts on business 101 so i do not suggest going in for an, a year two year you know executive mbas and all this on the other hand what i want you to do is think bigger we are trained problem solution in my world i have what 10 15 minutes to make a diagnosis maybe five if you're working for Kaiser, maybe two. So <laughs> we see the problem, bang, we've got it, right? That's, a, that's what we've been trained to do, problem solution. I want you to open your mind. And when you look at everything in your world, why did they do it like that? Huh, what a dumb, I mean, you're in the OR. I heard you just scrubbed out. Why did they do it like that? Question everything around you. And you will realize quickly, there's fantastic problems, which I call opportunities, everywhere. So you can go to business school to learn how to do that, but you don't have to. You go and take the overall business courses so you know what EBITDA means, because I know when we got out of med school, nobody was teaching us contracts. But you're not going to become your chief financial officer, and you're not going to become your attorney. You pay people. But again, with your mentors and word of mouth, you find people in the lane you're in who are expert. Your uncle cannot be your lawyer, <laughs> please, if he does malpractice law, God forbid, or something. So if your lawyer is, is not in the lane of your entrepreneurial interest, they can hurt you. Because when you have, when you're paying professionals who don't know what they're doing, they cost more in the long term because they themselves don't know the learning curve. So find professionals in the lane, in the world, you know, that you're involved in. Now, you know, you mentioned a little bit about how your journey was so long. Obviously, it's many years. It's not like instant success. And you've also said it's important to kind of enjoy the journey as opposed to just focus on the end result. Is that, is that true? I mean, talk about how 
you can't just focus on the final result. You got to every step, you have to enjoy that moment. No? Well, you know, I get goosebumps when I think about it. So Katie and I have been on this journey nearly 40 years. And we've had big cries and big high fives. And we've had tremendous loss and tremendous wins. And all of it is part of our history. And all of it is celebrated because we did it together, because we did it with our team. And we're crazy about our team. And when it all pulls in, even the hard stuff, you know, I was in OB, as I said, and you know, it's four in the morning and you know, we got a gal who's crashing and they can't intubate her. We're going to go in and we, we went with lidocaine and we cut down and pulled the baby out because we were going to lose both. It wasn't the Jack. I'll always remember it. 4 a.m. And it was cold and it was scary. And we were about to have two deaths. But the team was there and we pulled it out. And it was so good. It was so high. It was so strong. And it's a little win in the game of healthcare, but it was a great win that is part of my story. And for us medicine people, those little wins are to be celebrated and we can enjoy it more, I think, than business people because we're trained to, to focus, you know, on, listen, let's, let's not go whining about XXX, instead let's focus on our success. So all of those trials make us who we are and now we can choose how we want to present that so katie and i are extremely optimistic again we don't see problems we see solutions we see opportunity we see ways to go forward and so those tough times just make it tougher and more resilient and i learn we're dots we're, we're getting tested all the time so we must remain curious and open to new ideas and to learning. And that growth mindset is what is so valuable in business. And that's what we have to maintain. Now you started this journey four decades ago, you said, and obviously a lot has changed. The entrepreneur landscape has changed, of course. What, do you, what would you say to young entrepreneurs about the current climate for medical entrepreneurship? Wide open, hot. Red hot. The difference is speed. Things happen so fast now. Proactive Solution launched in 1995, before some people were probably alive on this call. So 1995 was the beginning of infomercial. And, it, and it, you know, now you don't even know what an infomercial is. So the world is moving fast and it's very nimble. And because it's so fast, you don't have a lot of time to fully develop the idea and, and kind of wallow. You've got to move and roll. And that's where your mentors and your experts are incubators. Those are, uh, they're all over the place now. Incubators are the think tanks you can go and, and sort of, you know, a startup in a box where they help uh, get you to the starting line and beyond. But because the world is moving fast, it is not the same playing field, but medicine is wide open, wide open. Again, we know what business doesn't. We're in the specialty. Let me tell you your advantage, doctors. You're a doctor. You understand the pathophysiology of the problem. You understand the patient. You understand what the patient will do. It's called compliance. So if you're going to find a solution for the problem, will the patient do what it is you need them to do? I come now through all these years with marketing and business and I understand that side of the world. So Katie and I add those two, you know, and plus experience. But business never understood acne. So when Katie and I launched acne, here's what they said to us. Who cares about acne? It's not important. We said, are you kidding me? This is who you are. This is the most important real estate you'll ever own. If this isn't working, you're not in the game of life. Now you can have a filter, but that's not the point. Your real life naked skin is what you see in the mirror every day and it's crushing, crushing. Business didn't get it at all. So you have an advantage doctor because you sit on two sides of this stool, three-sided stool. Your business skills you can learn and you can 
be as smart and hopefully cunning, I guess, as the business world. Because remember, business people are about money, not the higher good. Katie and I never lost our integrity. That's why we don't talk about numbers. That's irrelevant. My success is when someone comes to me and I can clear their skin. That's success. And success means to have mattered. So at 65, I'm relevant. I still matter to my patients this morning on a new laser, the Avi Clear, and to see their lives change, and to new product development that Katie and I are doing within the, you know, the company. It's exhilarating. I don't ever want to stop. I hope we're still having a conversation at 75. Absolutely. That's the plan. What would you say uh, is the number one quality that, uh, that is responsible for your success as an entrepreneur? Curiosity and being compelled. Compelled. How many people have come up to me and said, oh, I had that idea. And I go, yeah. So <laughs> what would you do about <laughs> it? Nothing, you know, compelled. I was compelled to find an answer. And so if you don't have it, stick with your day job and be the best at it. A good idea is just a good idea. But you yeah. have to be unshakable in your conviction on what it is you're going to solve. That's really, really well said. Uh, you know, wrapping it up, because I know how busy you are, you know, so many young entrepreneurs look up to you as a role model based off everything that you've accomplished. What is your number one piece of advice? If you can only give one piece of advice to a young entrepreneur that says they want to be the next, next Dr. Fields. Well, number one, don't be the next Dr. Fields. Be you, be better, be more than, because the opportunities are always changing and different. And look for, it's called a blue ocean. The sharks are swimming in the red ocean. That's where all the competition is. We all don't need another, name it, right? There's how many apps for this and that and everything else. Everybody's coming up to me with diagnostic tools for dermatology. Wow, there's so <laughs> many diagnostic apps. That's a red ocean. So find where the water is clear and blue that nobody even thought of. Go into that blue space where there's wide open opportunity. Find and build yourself a team. Stay curious. Find an amazing partner, but vet them. Remember, our, our egos sabotage us. You know, we, we, we get jealous, we get greedy, we get this, we get that, and we, we ruin our own good efforts. So when you have a partner, just like a marriage, work hard at making sure it's always gonna be okay. Do the work, do the work, and you will be successful. The worst is I, there, were, there was actually another skincare line that was looking pretty good. It was two dermatologists. It was a male, female, not married. But they started fighting, and they lost it all. They lost it all. So back to that relationship really matters. And without a team in a relationship, it's very difficult to do this alone. I mean, what a, just what a you know, terrific interview. I think hearing your entire story that I'm sure people have no idea how hard you had to work, the challenges that you faced, how you overcame them. I think it's just, it's very refreshing to hear your perspective on work ethic, uh, which really is the basis for all success. And I think it's particularly important when you talk about young entrepreneurs and the millennials, where there's definitely an entitlement to many millennials. And I think that for the few millennials that are willing to put in the work and grind, I think just like you said, the opportunity for success and entrepreneurship in this environment, it's never been higher, it's never been better. So very inspirational. Thank you so much for your time. And thanks for all you do. Hopefully we can inspire a few more uh, entrepreneurs like yourself to really change the world. We must, we must. I challenge you to do it. See the problem and solve it. So much to do. And then I'll come down to Miami and we'll all celebrate. All right. We'll do with you. Have a great weekend. Kathy, thanks so much. All right. Really appreciate your time. Have a, have a wonderful weekend. All right. Thank you. We'll try to stay dry. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.